Professor, Department of Biological Science. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Sumun Bhandar, Assistant Professor, Department of Biological Sciences, School of Life Science and Biotechnology of Adamas University. In our last lecture, we have discussed the module isolation of industrially important microbial strain and fermentation media. There, we have covered the topics on sources of industrial important microbial strains, as well as we have discussed about the isolation as well as screening techniques for the industrial important microorganism from different sources. Today, we will discuss about the culture collections and maintenance of industrial strains in the same module. So before entering into the main content, we will discuss about the learning objectives. So after this class, what you will learn from this lecture? So basically you will learn to define what is a culture collection and its significance in microbiology as well as in biotechnology. You will learn different methods of microbial preservation, including freezing, lyophilization, liquid nitrogen storage, and you will understand the advantages and disadvantages of different preservation techniques. Let us start with culture collections. You know, microbial culture collections provide a rich source of microorganisms that are of past, present, and potential future interest. There are almost uh, 500 culture collections around the world. And most of these are small specialized collections that supply different type of cultures, microbial culture, cell culture, or other related services only by special agreement. Others, notably national collections, publish catalogs listing the organisms held and provide extensive services for the industrial as well as academic organizations. In our country, we have microbial type culture collection. We have culture collections in NCCS Pune. We have culture collections in Chandigarh Imtech. And in UK, for example, the national culture collection is UK NCC that is made up of several collections. They are housed in several institutions and tend to specialize in bacteria, in yeast, filamentous fungi, algae of either industrial or medical importance. Whereas in USA, there is a main centralized collection, the American type culture collection, which holds all types of microorganisms. Now, we need to understand what is the role of culture collection in industrial microbiology. So, so far, whatever we have understood, about the sources of microorganism. To isolate microorganism having industrial importance from natural as well as man-made resources, it's not at all an easy task. Rather, it's a labor consuming, it's a time consuming and highly expensive method. Whereas industrial microorganisms are initially selected from the natural samples and are collected as a culture in a particular institution because they have been shown to produce desired product. 
Now, there are several strains that are likely to survive well in nature, but some strains that we have to preserve for future use. And those strains should be considered as industrially important microorganism having rapid growth, having genetic stability, non-toxic to human, or doesn't produce any non-toxic product. They should not be uh, pathogenic, and they are large. They have large cell size, so that we can easily remove them from the culture medium. Now, we need to understand what kind of function culture collection is performing here. The prime functions of a culture collection are to maintain the existing collection to continue to collect new strains and to provide pure authenticated culture samples of each organism. Problems of culture maintenance have been aided by the development as well as use of cryopreservation and freeze drying techniques, along with miniaturized storage methods. And one convenient method involves adsorption of cells to glass beads that may be placed in frozen storage, from which individual beads may be removed without thawing the whole sample. So here we will discuss about the task of culture collection center. Mainly use of microorganisms selected from the culture collection obviously provide significant cost saving compared to uh, environmental isolation and has the advantage that some characterization of the microorganism will have already been uh, performed. <clears throat> However, there are certain disadvantages. And that is, competitors have access to the same microorganism. So mainly here in culture collection, ours as well as in natural collection, long-term preservation and accessibility of strains for decades and complete physiological as well as phylogenetic characterization of all the collected microbial strains have been performed previously. Extended quality control has been performed and regularly monitored through routine checkup. Maintaining a, a concise biodiversity database and collection related taxonomy and diversity research has been performed in culture collections. Now, basically this uh, concept has been uh, developed by Professor Curl. He first uh, actually proposed a concept of a center that basically provide authentic examples of organism that can be grown or that can be maintained in, a, in, the, in the laboratory. They normally have a public service role and uh, provide associated information as well as services. So the main aim of culture collection is acquisition, preservation, authentication, uh, then production, cataloging, and distribution of standard reference microorganisms, lines, and other materials, both for industrial as well as research purposes. Now, here we have listed few purposes of culture collection center. So first, they will collect and maintain 
the important and useful microorganism along with the organism, cultured cells also. They maintain culture in viable condition and that should be contamination free. And to make available at normal nominal cost to the researcher, to the workers, to teachers, students, as well as to the industry person. And also, they provide sufficient information through cataloging to make the process easy for procuring. And also, they prepare a comparative list of microorganisms so that you can judge which microorganism is best for your purpose. So here you can see there are two type of culture collections that is present in our national collections actually that is present in our country. One is Microbial Culture Center in Pune, NCCS, and another one is Microbial Type Culture Collection and Gene Bank that is present in Chandigarh. Now, apart from this, we have several culture collection center. Important several culture collection center are the main repository of important microorganisms like American type culture collection, uh, Northern uh, Regional Research Laboratory, then World Federation for Culture Collection, then, uh, then Lebanese Institute, DSMG, and check collection of microorganisms. Basically, the function is to maintain the existing collection, to continue to collect new microbial strain, and to provide pure authenticated collection samples of each organism. Now, we will move to the properties of useful industrial microorganisms. So when we consider a microorganism is an useful micro useful industrial microorganism. So first and foremost, the organism must be capable of growth and produce sufficient amount of product in large scale. It must grow rapidly in a cost effective culture medium. It must produce desired product with high yield in a cost effective culture medium. It must be able to grow in liquid culture medium at low price, means cost effective liquid culture medium. And we consider a microorganism as an industrial microorganism when it is non pathogenic especially to human as well as to animal, economically important animal and plants. And finally, we consider it if it should be amenable to genetic manipulation because for better yield, for increased yield, we often produce genetically manipulated microorganism through mutation or through classical genetic selection techniques. But there are some problems we may encounter. The first one is to develop less expensive culture medium for a large scale production. Generally, we use another industrial byproduct like corn strip liquor coming from sugar processing industry, away from milk processing industry. To maintain the strain pure throughout the culture condition, throughout the duration of fermentation for improved yield. And to prevent contamination, mainly to prevent contamination from the viruses is very important because water is the source of fudge viruses. If a single fudge virus is present in a container, that may ruin the whole product. 
that may destroy the total fermentation batch. So the media must be sterilized prior to being inoculated with the desired organism and purity must be maintained throughout the production process. There are another problem, impurity of product. Sometimes impurity, if impurity exists during the uh, downstream process, during the purification process, sometimes it has been observed that physical stability, chemical stability was not there. And sometimes it has been observed that they may interact with itself. So unwanted modification, if there is no such quick recovery, quick purification, unwanted modification should not be there. And safe and inexpensive disposal is another important step and another problem we may encounter. Because in several industries, mainly fermentation, food processing, dairy industry, a massive quantity of waste product we have to dispose from the industry. And most of the waste product contains biomass. So it may cause some problem both contaminating the soil as well as water bodies. Next, we will move to the storage part or the preservation part of microorganism. So, when we have to preserve the industrially important microorganism, or we maintain a stock culture or a pure culture. Several methods can be adopted. Several methods have been devised for preservation of microbial cultures. But none of them can be said to apply exclusively to industrial microorganisms. Furthermore, no one method is sufficient for preserving all organisms. The method most suited to any particular organism must therefore be determined by experimentation unless the information is already available to us. And methods employed in the preservation of microorganism all involve some sort of limitations on the rate of metabolism of the microorganism and a low rate of spontaneous mutation exists during the growth of microorganism. About one in every 10 to the power nine division so lowering the metabolic rate of the organism will further reduce the chances of occurrence of mutation. For that, many methods of preservation for microorganisms have been developed. Here, through this lecture, we will try to discuss different methods to preserve microorganisms like bacteria, viruses, algae, protozoa, yeast, molds, etc. There are two criteria for selecting a method of preservation for a particular microbial culture. The first one is the period of preservation desert. How long we have to preserve the microorganism. And the second one is the nature of a culture to be preserved. So 
So we are basically preserving a microbial culture and that microbial culture to be termed as a stock culture. So what is the definition of stock culture? We can define stock cultures like that, that these are those cultures of microorganisms that are stored or maintained for future use in such a fashion that their growth and uh, productive capacities remain unchanged, remain unaltered. Basically, there are two types of stock cultures. Number one, which is known as working stocks. And number two, that is known as primary stocks. The working stock cultures are those which are used frequently and they must be maintained in a vigorous and uncontaminated condition. And these cultures are maintained as agar slant, as agar stab, spoof preparation, or broth cultures. And they are held under refrigeration. They must be checked continuously and periodically for possible changes in growth characteristics, nutrition, productive capacity, as well as contamination. On the other hand, Primary stocks are cultures that are held in reserve for practical or for new batch of fermentation. Not only that, for comparative purposes, for biological assays, for possible uh, latter screening programs, we will keep some sort of culture in stock. And these are known as primary stocks. These cultures are not maintained in a state of high physiological activity and they are delved into uh, only rarely. Transfer from these cultures are made only when a new working stock is required or when the primary stocks or primary stock cultures must be subcultured to avoid death of the culture, cultured cells. Thus, primary stock cultures are stored in such a manner as to require the least possible number of transfer over a period of time. Now, if you look into the aims of uh, maintaining or uh, as well as preserving the microorganism, we can see there are three basic aims. Number one, to keep the culture alive. Number two, to keep the culture uncontaminated. Number three, to keep the culture as healthy as possible, both physically as well as physico-chemically or physiologically. Now, what type of method we can adopt here? So we can say there are basically two types of method. Broadly, we can say one is short-term method, another one is long-term method. So mainly the short-term methods are prepared for working culture, and long-term methods are followed for stock culture, mainly. Now we will start discussing on short-term culture. So the first thing is serial subculture or periodic transfer of fresh culture media. So in serial subculture, basically microorganisms are periodically preparing a fresh culture medium and transferring the previous stock into there. They remain viable for several weeks or several months. It's a most simple method. No special apparatus is required here. 
and very easy to recover the culture. No sophisticated instruments involved here. But the disadvantage of this culture technique is that relying upon this method for culture maintenance. So there is a chance of contamination, high chance of contamination, loss of genetic as well as phenotypic characteristics. You have to involve some manpower there and no productivity. Most of the cases we can see that uh, gradually during subculturing, the culture may lose productivity. So another method that we are is going to discuss here is the preservation by using glycerol. So preservation by using glycerol, here you can see that uh, generally frozen using 15% glycerol. An equal amount of glycerol and culture broth are mixed. Then they are dispensed into several tubes and frozen at minus 10 degrees centigrade. Microorganism may remain viable for months, but it varies with the type of microbial culture. As you can see here, for Escherichia coli, for Diplococcus pneumoniae, they remain viable for five months. It's very, it's, 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 it's uh, nearly five to six months. Haemophilus influenzae, four months, Neisseria meningitis, but for weeks for Neisseria meningitis and Neisseria gonorrhea, six weeks and three weeks respectively. So we can see that these methods generally by another method that we are going to discuss here is preservation by paper and this is a drying method. Mostly the spores which are sensitive to freeze drying can be preserved by normal drying method. Here we are using disc, either paper disc or gelatin disc. So before that, we have to prepare a thick suspension of bacteria that to be placed on sterile disc, either paper or gelatin, then dried over a phosphorus pentoxide within a desiccator under vacuum, and then you can keep it at room temperature to uh, six degrees centigrade temperature for several years. Here you can see that it mixed bacteria can be stored following this method for five to 15 years. Next, another type of drying method that there we are using calcium chloride. So dried culture, the culture, thick culture is dried over calcium chloride in vacuum and stored in a refrigerator. And mostly organisms survive at this particular method for years. Next method is another type of refrigeration method where you can use cold room, where the temperature has been kept at 4 degrees centigrade. And keeping microorganisms at 4 degrees centigrade simply by changing their metabolic activities, slowing down their metabolic activities. And they cannot be stored using refrigeration for a longer period, for a few days or maybe a few weeks. We can keep microorganism human viable. But when comes the question of long-term storage, a simple method we can adopt is the mineral oil or liquid paraffin storage method. 
And one of the earlier preservation method is this mineral oil or liquid paraffin storage method. So here you have to prepare a microbial culture and a pre-sterilized paraffin oil or mineral oil to be poured over the microbial culture. It could be a slant or it could be a stab. You have to keep it the upright condition and you have to keep the tubes at room temperature. If you are using a gas slant, you can keep it at room temperature or else if possible, you can keep it at 4 degree to 5 degree centigrade. Using this method, as because it is limiting the oxygen access to the microorganism that reduces again, that reduces metabolic activity as well as growth of microorganism. So you can keep the microbial cell for several years. As you can see here for microbacterium, you can keep it through this method for seven to 10 years. And for bacillus, it's eight to 12 years. The cell will remain viable. Next method that is saline suspension method. So here we are preserving it at 1% salt concentration in a screw cap tube to prevent evaporation. And Using this method, you can store the culture at room temperature. And whenever you want to transfer, you just transfer it in a agar slant. Another method that is immersion oil method. Sorry, immersion method, immersion in distilled water. So this is the most inexpensive method. And low maintenance. This is known as Castellani method. 50 years ago, this method has been established. Mostly the fungus, different type of fungus, yeast, actinomyces, can be stored for several years using this technique, which is known as Castellani technique. Now, by using sterile soil, you can keep fungi like Fusarium, Penicillium, Alternaria, and Rhizopus. The spores can be stored for several years. And viability, the spores will remain viable for 70 to 80 years for some sort of fungi. After that, we will discuss about uh, the freeze drying method or the lyophilization method. In the freeze drying or the lyophilization method, here basically we are using a uh, vacuum sublimation technique. We are using vacuum sublimation technique and using vacuum sublimation technique or freeze drying the product which are hygroscopic and must be protected from moisture. So, freezing the cells in a medium that contained a lyoprotectant, generally we use sucrose as a lyoprotectant for this purpose. And then we freeze the culture rapidly to minus 20 degrees centigrade. We freeze it to minus 20 degrees centigrade. And after that, we use vacuum chamber to remove water, to evaporate water. This is a kind of drying method, but we are not using heat here. Rather, we are using uh, freeze dry, and this is the most satisfactory method of long-term preservation of microorganisms. It is universally used for the preser <laughs> preservation of bacteria, viruses, fungi, toxin, enzymes, and other biological materials. 
So lyophilization is the most popular method. And it consists of drying of culture or a spore suspension from a frozen state under reduced pressure. So generally we use sucrose solution or we use 10% skimmed milk or bovine serum, 5% inositol in dissolving distilled water as a protective medium. We use a thick suspension of the microbial culture. And after drying, we will keep the cell in ampule. And the ampules to be kept at minus 20 degrees centigrade. Then the chilled ampules are connected with a high vacuum system, usually incorporating a desiccant and immersed into a freezing mixture of dry ice. A vacuum pump is turned on and the ampules are evacuated till drying is complete. Then the freeze dried ampules are immediately sealed off and stored under refrigeration. If you properly prepare and stored, most lyophilized cultures will remain viable more than 20 years without the occurrence of uh, genetic changes. Now, there are few advantages as well as disadvantages of this technique. First, we will discuss about the advantages of this uh, lyophilization method. As the ampules are sealed, there is no risk of contamination of infection with mites. The prepared ampules are easily stored, they are not readily broken, and most species remain viable for many years. There is no, uh, there is there is less opportunity for the cultures to undergo changes in characteristics. And it cut down the number of transfer. Owing to its small size of glass ampules, hundreds of life lies culture can be stored in a small storage space. And also easy to uh, dispatch. But the main problem is application of sophisticated instruments and solvents. So you have to invest more for this process. Now we are going to discuss about the cryopreservation technique or the freeze drying technique. So this is a low temperature technique using uh, liquid nitrogen. So the liquid or vapor phase of nitrogen at uh, 156 to 196 degrees centigrade is widely used for preserving microorganisms and cultured cells. Microorganisms like fungi, bacteriophages, viruses, algae, protozoa, bacteria, and other plant, animal, and tissue cultures have all been successfully preserved into it. In this method, we are basically freezing the cells in a cryogenic state. That's why it's also known as cryogenic storage or cryopreservation. It is just like uh, lifelization, a satisfactory method for long uh, term preservation of microorganisms. And it has also been successful with many specimens which cannot be preserved by lyophilization. And the maintenance of microorganisms is done by suspended me metabolism. Fire life is regarded as standstill at minus 130 or below temperature. So at that particular temperature, 
at minus 196 degrees centigrade, provided the culture survived the treatment. And the period of preservation should be few years. So long term preservation without any change in the culture characteristics is uh, now attainable. And major steps involved in these methods is that we have to prepare a thick suspension of cell. If you are using animal or plant cell, you have to use uh, a cryoprotectant like uh, glycerol, 10% glycerol, or sucrose solution. And then you have to mix it equally, which can resist this cold shock. Then you have to keep this in ampule, small ampule. Ampule will be filled, means culture filled uh, ampule will be frozen rapidly at a rate of about one degree centigrade. And you will keep it at minus 20 degrees centigrade. And then there will be uh, freeze dried and sealed successively. So this particular method has certain advantages. It's the most effective method of preservation. No subculturing is required. Culture characteristics uh, will remain unchanged. Ampule are not open to contamination or infection by mites, as because they are they are sealed all the times. And living material uh, of a type uh, could be microorganism cells, which would not normally grow in a culture would not be preserved in culture condition can remain viable in that particular state, metabolically inactive in that particular state. So, this is the protocol or the methods where we can keep the cell viable for a short time or for a long time. And both for cryopreservation with cryoprotectant, either we are using an ice cold solution containing polyvinyl alcohol and glycerol. And due to the presence of polyvinyl ethanol, the viscous thick cell suspension is obtained, which is kept for about 30 minutes in an ice bath for equilibrium. And during this equilibrium process, an aliquot of 0.5 to 1 ml of cell suspension is dispensed into each, each plastic cryovial or glass ampule. Then they will be tightly closed, clamped into uh, onto, onto a leveled aluminum can and are placed at minus 30 degree to minus, minus 20 to 30 degree centigrade for one hour. And then they will transfer into liquid nitrogen, where the freezing rate should be one degree per minute. The cans are then placed into a canister or a rack or a drawer and frozen rapidly at minus 80 degrees centigrade or in a liquid nitrogen. So this is the procedure of uh, cryopreservation. And when you have to revive the stored cells, the frozen ampules you have to remove, you have to keep it not immediately into 37 degrees centigrade, rather you will keep it first at refrigerator, then you will keep it in a, uh, in, 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 in a water bath at, at 37 degrees centigrade for a few seconds. And the third cell contain of the ampule or the vial are immediately transferred to uh, membrane to form a thick layer. 
Then the resulting bacterial membrane with uh, immobilized cells are used as a biological component. So you can culture it in a liquid culture medium if it's a bacterial cell or a fungal cell. In a liquid culture or in a broth culture, you can culture it. So next uh, is another storage method that is stored in silica gel. So using silica gel at low temperature, you can keep it for one to two years. First, you have to quickly desiccate it at low temperature, which allows the cell to remain viable for a long period of time. You can see in case of Neurospora, which has been successfully been preserved over silica gel, other species, Saccharomyces, Aspergillus, Pseudomonas, Isericia, they can be stored using silica gel for, uh, for a long time. So here is an example of uh, uh, maintaining pure culture for extended period, remain in viable condition without any genetic change. And through preservation, we can stop the cell division at a particular stage. The cell will remain viable. And the viability of microorganism will not be affected. So particularly the first my microorganism, Streptomyces or Euphysians, NRRL2209, was the first microorganism deposited in a culture collection in support uh, of a um, microbially based patent application. So this is all about the culture collection as well as preservation method for both long-term as well as short-term preservation method for the industrially important microbial cells. So, that's all for today's lecture.